Well, good morning, Wesley family. We are glad that you're joining us, however you're joining us, by Facebook, uh, by YouTube, or on the phone. If you're on Facebook and YouTube, do us a favor, uh, like and share and comment on the video. Uh, that, uh, that'll just kind of make it feel like you're more, more involved and, of course, share the service with others. Um, would like to let you know that we are collecting items for our blessing box that we share with the Presbyterian Church, and so if you have uh, non-perishable food items or personal care items that you'd like to donate, uh, bring them to the church, and then we, we from there, will stock, uh, stock that blessing box as it's needed. Uh, remind everybody of our ongoing uh, study on the Apostles' Creed, not only on Sunday mornings, but also as you're following along in your devotional uh, guides, and then our small groups that are meeting uh, during the week. Uh, we'll, um, so this coming week, uh, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. The Wednesday evening groups will be combined, so typically we've had an in-person group at 6 o'clock and then a group on Zoom at 6.30. Those groups are going to be combined and be joining me on Zoom at 6.30 on Wednesday. So um, those of you coming to the group will get that note, and if you want to join us, uh, you are more than welcome. And then finally, just a reminder, uh, to, well, first, before finally, um, I would really like to take this moment to encourage you with Easter coming up. Um, if you feel comfortable and, and you've kind of been waiting for a little nudge uh, for time to come back for in-person worship, especially if you've been vaccinated uh, and you feel comfortable, we'd like to invite you to give us a try on Easter Sunday in person, either at the 9 o'clock service or at the 11 o'clock service. We are wearing masks and practicing social distancing at worship, and we'd be glad to see you again. Very happy to see you again, in fact. As we move into uh, Palm Sunday and Holy Week and Easter and Easter week, I just want to let you know that we will have our uh, 8 o'clock pre-recorded service on Palm Sunday as well as, well as our in-person 9 o'clock contemporary service and our in-person 11 o'clock uh, traditional service with palms. On Holy Thursday, we'll have a service at 7 o'clock that will both be in-person and live-streamed, as well as on Good Friday, a service at 7 o'clock that will both be in-person and live-streamed, and then our regular schedule on Easter Sunday, 8 o'clock uh, pre-recorded, 9 o'clock contemporary, 11 o'clock traditional, and again, uh, we invite you to uh, join us if you're, if you're comfortable, if you're able, uh, join us in person uh, at those services on Easter Sunday. And then finally, um, I'd like to encourage you to continue to support your church as you've all been so uh, wonderfully generous uh, to continue to do so. Uh, you can either send those gifts in or give online at wesleyonline.org slash give.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in order that the children of earth might discern good from evil, you sent your Son to be the light of the world. As Christ shines upon us, may we learn what pleases you and live in all truth and all goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. so glad that you are joining us. Uh, so the last few weeks we've been talking about the Apostles' Creed, right? Ooh. We talked about how powerful Jesus is and, um, and the strength that he has. He's a great ruler, right? And then last week we talked about how human Jesus is, that he had very human qualities. He was a human. He felt human feelings. He was just like you and me, right? Why do you have an avocado? We'll get to the avocado. So this week I want to talk to you, in the Apostles' Creed, we're talking about when Jesus died, and it says that he descended to the dead. And that can seem kind of like Jesus lost, 
right? This powerful person that was supposed to come and save the people, he himself died. So, so that can seem like he lost, right? So I have an avocado and do you know what's inside an avocado? A filling. There's a filling, like a green filling. And what did you say? A pit. There is a pit inside of an avocado, right? So there's a pit inside of our avocado. All right, so when you look at the pit, do you think it looks dead or alive? Dead, like buried. Yeah, like dead, right? It's brown. Doesn't look like the rest of the avocado, right? No. Okay, but what do you think would happen if we took this pit out and we put it in some, some fertile ground and we watered it and we gave it the nutrients that it needed. What do you think would happen? It would come back to life. You think it would come back to life? I think it would put out. Okay. Everything. So even though the pit of this avocado looks dead, it's, not dead, it's actually not dead. Something new can grow from it, right? So when can Jesus, grow an avocado tree? You can't, yeah, from a pit, you can grow a new one. Can we? Uh, well, they don't grow very well in Iowa. We, Darn. Don't, have, we don't have very good weather Darn for weather. growing avocados inside, maybe. Darn weather. Um, so when Jesus died, his friends were so sad. The, his disciples and the people, they all, they all felt defeated. They felt like they had lost. They felt like they had messed up, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason that Jesus died is because... Of Peter. Well... It, the bigger reason that Jesus died is for our sins, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because something that's different for, between Jesus and us is that Jesus was perfect. Did he ever sin? No. Never. He was perfect. So a long time ago, when you made a mistake, you when you sinned, you would make a sacrifice to God. Well, Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. As soon as Jesus sacrificed his life, when God gave us Jesus and he sacrificed his son, that was the ultimate sacrifice. Also, meaning he, Jesus gave his life so that our sins would be forgiven. So Jesus' friends were sad, but what they forgot was how powerful Jesus is. And Jesus is so powerful that he rose from the dead. That on the third day he rose again. Do you know any humans? that can raise themselves from the dead? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus can, right? Because he's that powerful. So he is so powerful that he can overcome death. Just like an avocado, you might be fooled and think that the pit looks dead, right? But also like all pits in fruit or like veggies. <laughs> but, new, grow. but new life can come from this pit. And when we give our lives to Jesus, then he begins a new life in us. And that is a gift that um, is eternal. That's forever, right? And it's something that we need to be really, really thankful for. All right. Should we pray? Let's, pray. Let's do it. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. So much. So much. You gave us Jesus. You gave us Jesus. We thank you. We thank you that he died for our sins. That he died for our sins. But especially, but especially that he rose again. That he rose again. We thank you. We thank you for the life. For the life we have. We have in Jesus. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Easter is coming. We'll talk about this again. But the good news is that Jesus rose. Rose right? from the dawn. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us this week. We will catch you again. Next, Next week. week. Bye. I will sing the songs of gladness. I will sing the Lord's praises upon a ten-string song.
Uh, let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Perhaps you've heard of what is called an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is a 30 to 60 second speech. If you're uh, someone who is in business or someone who is looking for a job, you develop an elevator speech, a 30 to 60 second uh, uh, speech uh, about why somebody should hire you or why somebody should invest in your business or why a customer should, should do business with you. The idea is, is that you can uh, say this in the time that it takes uh, for an elevator ride. The Apostles' Creed is the elevator pitch of Christianity. It's, it's the basics. It's the, if somebody were to ask you what Christians believe, you could legitimately respond uh, by reciting the Apostles' Creed because, at least in basic terms, it's all there. In fact, the structure of the Creed can be understood as a series of ups and downs. Uh, Jesus came down to earth he descended to the dead, he came up from the grave, he ascended into heaven, and he will come back down to earth, and then we will all rise from the dead. And so you see this up and down uh, structure. Today we focus on four of those ups and downs, uh, concentrating especially on two of them that are not generally well understood. And so the first down we take today is uh, he descended to the dead. Uh, this is probably the most misunderstood uh, and in some cases even edited portions of the Apostles' Creed. In the older versions, it actually said he descended into hell. If you were to pick up your United Methodist hymnal and you were to turn to the back uh, to items number, item numbers 881 and 882, you'll see uh, two versions of the Apostles' Creed. You'll see what the uh, hymnal calls the traditional version and then the ecumenical version. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, traditional version uh, doesn't have the words. It, it, it's basically the same except for it doesn't have the words he descended to the dead and the ecumenical version does. Um, I want to argue for you that the last thing the 881 version is, is a traditional version. It's a very modern Methodist adaptation of the ancient creed because somewhere along the line, some Methodist decided that, um, oh, well, I don't believe in that. I'll take that out. And then that got published. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, the rest of the church, the rest of the universal body of Christ, moved on reciting the creed as it's written. And so I want to argue that, in fact, what we call the traditional version is not the traditional version at all. It's actually a rather modern innovation on the ancient creed. So that's why uh, when I'm designing worship, we don't use it. Uh, in fact, the idea that Jesus descended to the dead or descended into hell or descended into Hades, which is actually the Greek word there, um, is in the Bible. 1 Peter 3.19 said he went and preached to the spirits in prison. The idea is, is that uh, Holy Saturday, Jesus went down into uh, what the Hebrews would have called Sheol or the Greeks would have called Hades, which is... Um, in, at least in the Hebrew mind, uh, made up of two, two divisions, two compartments, you know, first class and economy class. And so uh, on the one side of Sheol, you had where uh, people who had led, le led lives pleasing to God, it's where they went when they died, and in the other side, you had the other folks. And so the idea here is that Jesus went down and preached to those, uh, particularly the Old Testament saints that had lived before Jesus lived on the earth in order that they might have an opportunity to participate in salvation. That is great good news. That, that Jesus went and rescued people out of what we would call hell. That is great news. I don't know why anybody would want to leave that out 
of our creed. Jesus conquered death. He conquered the grave. He conquered hell. And he led captives, as Paul says in one place, out of that place and in to heaven. And so this is an important thing for us to believe. So he descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. So we're going up, right? So think of three floors, heaven, earth, hell, right? So we went down to hell. We're coming back up to earth. On the third day, he rose again. Now notice it says on the third day, not after three days. That's actually a question that I've gotten. Um, and so people would say, well, he died on Friday. That, and then... And then um, they say, well, it should be Monday that he rose and because they're thinking that three days elapses and that's not what the creed says. That's not what the Bible says. It says the, on the third day. So Friday, one day, Saturday, two days, Sunday, the third day. The death and resurrection of Jesus is the single most important fact of the faith. Uh, you simply will not get very far in being a Christian believer until you come to terms with the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's simply the most important fact. It is the uh, sin qua non, that's Latin for without this nothing, right? If you don't have the death and resurrection of Jesus in terms of cr the Christian faith, you don't have anything. It is the sin qua non of Christianity. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, if Christ has not been raised... Our preaching is useless. If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. And so if Christ is not risen, then what I'm doing here today, what you're doing today watching me, what this entire church is, is built to do, and all the money that has been spent, it is a colossal, absolute waste of time and money if Jesus has not been bodily raised from the dead. And so we've gone down, we've come up, we're going to go up again. The creed says that he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Now, we do have a day in the church calendar, a Sunday in the church calendar, the Sunday uh, just before Pentecost, uh, that we have Ascension Sunday. So we talk about Jesus going back up into heaven and we read that text from Acts chapter 1. But there, there are things that he's doing in heaven. There are things that he is doing in heaven that's important for us. He is reigning over his church. He is the Lord of the church now. The church is his kingdom on earth. He is, uh, Romans 8.34 says, he's interceding for us. He's praying for us. He's talking to the Father on our behalf as our representative in heaven. And he is waiting until the time for him to return. And then finally, our final phrase for this week, from there, from heaven, he shall come, come down, to judge the living and the dead. Uh, and my verse for that is Matthew 25, 31 through 46. And I'm not going to read it all for you. I'm just going to paraphrase it. But you know the story. Jesus said that when the Son of Man comes and sits on his throne, he will judge the people of the earth. And he will separate the people, the sheep and the goats. And the sheep he will put on his right and the goats he will put on his left. And the, to the sheep he's going to say... Uh, Blessed are you, enter into uh, the reward of your father because you, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then he's going to say to the goats, those on his left, he's going to say, depart into eternal punishment because you did not feed me when I was hungry. You did not clothe me when I was naked. You did not take care of me when I was in sick or in prison because if you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it for me. And that is a great story that a lot of people try to quote, or a lot of people do quote, rightly so, to talk about how Christians should live 
uh, generous lives, how, peop- how Christians should be concerned about the welfare of people, how people should participate in justice. But however, a lot of those who want to preach about justice don't want to talk about judgment. Judgment makes them uncomfortable. The idea of a God who would judge us is, is uncomfortable for them. But I want to suggest to you that there is no justice without judgment. In order to have justice, you have to have judgment first because you have to have decided what's right and what's wrong, what's true and what's untrue, what is wicked, what is righteous. And without that judgment, you cannot practice judgment. Or without, just, without that judgment, you cannot practice justice. And so, yes, this is a story about how we should be kind to our neighbors. We should be generous with what we have. We should be concerned about the needs of others. But finally, and ultimately, it is a story about God's judgment on the evil of this world, including the evil that lives in your heart and in mine. But our great hope, our great hope is that one day everything will be made right. I know we we talk about the second coming of Jesus, we talk about Uh, the judgment and we talk about them as if they are scary things that we don't want to talk about but I want to tell you this is the greatest good news of all is that there are things wrong with the world there are things that are not right in the world and that ultimately Jesus is going to come and exercise judgment bring justice and make all things as they should be life like the creed, has its ups and its downs. But we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus came and that he is coming back. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus, for what he came and did, for his death, for his burial, for his descending into the place of the dead, to preach the good news even to those that were in that place, to conquer the very gates of hell itself. God, we thank you for his resurrection. We thank you for his ascension into heaven, that he is seated at the right hand of God and reigning over his church and interceding on our behalf. God, we thank you for the promise that he's coming again to make all things right, to make all things new, to spread true justice and peace throughout the world. God, we pray for this church. We pray that you'd bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church, for this annual conference, and our Bishop Lori, this district, and our Superintendent Doug. We pray for our community, our nation, and our world in these troubled times. God, we pray for all the people and places who are in need throughout the world, all those who are sick and all those who are suffering. God, we pray for an end to this coronavirus pandemic and the restoration of our communities. God, we pray for political and social and racial and spiritual healing in our own nation. We pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our military and for our veterans. We pray for our law enforcement and our first responders. We pray for our health care workers and all of the essential workers that serve our communities. We pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for ourselves, our families, our church, our community, our nation, and the whole world, the blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. And now, God, we pray that you'd hear the prayers of each and every person worshiping with us today 
as we lift up to you, either silently or aloud, the prayers that are upon our hearts, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent upon each and every one of our hearts. God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, we pray that you would hear us now as we lift up our voices together in the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if it's something that you can do where you are, I invite you to stand with me and join in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ, experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen. Thank you.